My old friend Boudreau was walking down the Vermilion River down in Acadiana, and as he was walking along the banks of the river, he saw a pastor who was baptizing members of his congregation. As Boudreau drew closer, the pastor turned around and he said, Do you want to be saved? And Boudreau said, Well, of course. He says, Well, come on down here. And he grabbed Boudreau and he dunked him first, baptizing him. And he pulled Boudreau up and he says, Well, did you find Jesus? Boudreau said, Mais non. So he dunked him down a second time, held him a little bit longer, <laughs> prayed over him and he pulled him back up and he said, Did you find Jesus? Boudreau said, I told you no. So he dunked him down a third time and held him further until finally when he pulled him up, he says, did you find Jesus? Boudreau says, I didn't even know he was missing. <laughs> I didn't even know he was missing. You know, in ancient Israel, everybody knew the Messiah was missing. They prayed for him for a thousand years, but he hadn't come. This day, the day we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, he was made manifest to ancient Israel. Here he was. John the Baptist, who was revered as a holy man, didn't even want to touch it. He did not feel worthy to baptize the Messiah. The Messiah should have baptized him, but Jesus asked him to do it because he was giving an example of humility, and by his very baptism, he blessed the waters of baptism. They would no longer simply be waters of repentance, but now the water of the inner life of God in a soul. And that's what we celebrate when we celebrate our own baptism. That God not only forgives our sin, the original sin, and if adults, any personal actual sins we've committed, but God actually comes to dwell within that soul. St. Paul puts it this way when he wrote the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 he says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Now the problem in our culture today is that most people don't realize Jesus is missing. We have received Jesus in baptism, but then we have roundly ignored him. In fact, through deadly sin, we have actually expelled Jesus from our souls. The life of the Most Holy Trinity is lost. And people wonder why we're in the disastrous situation on earth that we're in. We don't even realize Jesus is missing from our lives, from our souls. And so we have to recapture the sacredness of our baptism in order to live once again the life God calls us to. You know, uh, King Louis IX, whom we know as St. Louis, that saintly king of France, was asked once what was his greatest possession. And he had many. He was the king, for goodness sakes. He had gone on crusade. He brought back the crown of thorns from Jerusalem, opened up a path for Christians to be able to go and worship the Lord as they had been so greatly persecuted. He had many, many things. And do you know what he responded? His greatest possession? The record of his baptism. That was his greatest gift. Because through baptism, he had a spiritual passport to eternity, the heavenly kingdom, not the earthly kingdom. Do we treasure our baptism the way St. Louis did? Do we recognize the calling that we have? I think there are two extremes in which we ignore the grace of baptism. On the one hand, you have those who believe their sins since baptism are so great that God could not possibly forgive them. That God 
would not look lovingly on that soul. And ironically, it's just the opposite. In fact, when our Lord spoke to Sister Faustina in the 1930s, just before World War II, predicting that if people did not turn to his mercy and seek his grace, the world would be in an even worse war than they had experienced in the Great War, known as World War I. And our Lord revealed to her that the more souls were in need of his mercy, the more he was attracted to them. He was drawn to them like a magnet, right? Our misery attracted his mercy. But instead, people run away. One evening when he spoke to St. Faustina on May the 1st, 1938, Jesus appeared to her and said, my daughter, do you need anything? And Sister Faustina said, oh, my love, when I have you, I have everything. But the Lord continued, if souls would put themselves completely in my care, I myself would undertake the task of sanctifying them, and I would lavish even greater graces upon them. There are souls who thwart my efforts, but I have not given up on them. And as often as they turn to me, I hurry to their aid, shielding them with my mercy, and I give them the first place in my compassionate heart. Therefore, dear friends, we must never think that we are beyond God's mercy and God's grace. He is attracted to us. That's one extreme. And so many people simply ignore God and live life without God because they can't believe God could forgive them. They are so caught up in their sin. Now here's the other extreme. You have those who may look at God in the fashion of the deists. That is to say, God is a very distant God. God set the world in motion sort of like a divine architect and has hands off ever since. So God's up in his heaven, but I really have nothing to do with this God. I live my own life. I do what I want to do. I'll do it my way. Nobody can tell me what to do, right? Very independent sort of soul. And that soul is teetering on disaster as soon as trouble comes into that life. That's the soul filled with pride, arrogance, and foolishness. And much of the world lives a life just that very way. A life without the personal relationship with God. Jesus did not come into this world to keep a distance from you. God, the eternal word, the proceeding word, you heard that in the writing of Isaiah in chapter 55. The prophecy is that my word will go into the world and it will bring back great fruit. This living word, right, is going to produce great fruit. Jesus is that proceeding word, proceeding from the Father, and has come, taken on flesh, become one of us, so that we might have a personal and intimate relationship with God. Not a distant God, but a personal God. Jesus did not mount that cross to be kept at a distance from you. The blood and the water and the Spirit all testify as one, as you heard in St. John's first letter, chapter 5. The blood and the water that poured out the side of Jesus Christ in his crucifixion points to our own baptismal grace and sacramental life. And the Spirit, the Spirit who was manifest by the dove on the day of baptism and the Father saying what? This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And when you and I are baptized, we are baptized into the death and resurrection of the same Jesus Christ. And God the Father could be heard to speak spiritually to your soul. Now you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Do you see how precious we are to God? And yet we often ignore it. If we realized that we were the living, walking, talking, breathing temples of the Holy Spirit by virtue of our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, wouldn't we live differently? Wouldn't we love one another differently? Wouldn't we bless Almighty God in a new way? 
This world is looking for meaning. Many people think it's in short-term happiness. So one thrill after another, one game after another, one pleasure after another. And once again, they lose their joy. But if they sought meaning in who they are, as the baptized children of God, they would find a joy that is sustained over time. I share with you the words of a great Pope of the early church, Pope St. Leo the Great, who calls us to our baptismal dignity and reminds us that we must look for Jesus when he is missing in our lives. Make him manifest and make a difference in the world with our vocation, our calling to be the children of our Heavenly Father. And St. Leo wrote this, Christian, recognize your dignity. And now that you share in God's own nature, do not return to your former base condition by sinning. Remember who is your head and of whose body you are now a member. Never forget that you have been rescued from the power of darkness and brought into the light of the kingdom of God. Amen. Today we will renew our baptismal vows and then we'll receive the waters of baptism as a blessing and a reminder. Just as each time you dip your hand in the holy water of the font, you're reminding yourself you're blessed by God the Father who created you, God the Son who redeemed you, and God the Holy Spirit who sanctifies you as you call on the Holy Spirit now.